Welcome back. Do you have your purplish, greenish folder from last time? Most of them are bluish, purplish, but somebody might have got a green one. Hopefully you brought that with you. Perfect, thanks. We're going to dig into some of those materials again today, and we have some additional ones you probably want to put in there. So if needed, pull that out. My name is Sarah Shoemaker, and my colleague Christy Gilbert's going to be with us this morning, or this afternoon. Golly, reset the brain, right? Um, we are focusing on creating the identity of who we are as a coach and who do we need to be. And so we've been learning a lot about DILTS, nested levels, um, and we're going to identify ways that we might grow as a coach today. So last time when we were here in November, we used the coaching continuum from the state. If you are an elementary person, otherwise we use the um, secondary coaching one too. And so if you don't have those, and you need an additional copy, we have that if you need that today. Otherwise, if you have that, you'll want to take that out. We'll be using that. Um, we're really working on understanding the levels of DILTS related to the environment today. So the big E and the little E, as we've been talking about, the little E being the physical setup of environment, the things that manifest themselves in that way, and we'll get into that. And the big E being the culture um, and how those things impact identity then we're, our success criteria will be refining our this I believe statements that we've been working on for the past couple of sessions to include <coughs> any new thinking you have about environment and environment or other things related to learning today. So we're going to do a connecting activity. We'll review DILTS a bit. We'll talk about the big E and the little E. We'll talk about coaching goal setting or goal setting with teachers. We'll review that coaching continuum and plan a purpose for growing ourselves. We'll refine our this I believe statements and then we'll have some reflection time at the end. So to start our time, think about what's on your professional Christmas wish list. What does your holiday wish list look like in terms of professional growth? Is it something tangible like a book? Is it something like uh, upcoming training you're doing, a staff meeting you're running, a project you're working on, what would you put on your professional Christmas wish list? Try to think of three things and just dot them on a sticky note. And then we're going to bring around some stereo cards so you can kind of find a breakfast club to talk to. Wherever you are is fine. If you just came back into the room and didn't hear the beginning of the directions, we're trying to share um, professional Christmas wish list. So you have a breakfast cereal in front of you. This is going to be your breakfast club. You will have four people in your group except for if you're Cocoa Puffs or Honey Snacks and you have three. So you're going to find your breakfast club and share what's on your professional Christmas wish list. When you're ready, you may stand up and dance. Thank you for sharing some of the things on your wish list. If you will thank your group members. And move back to your table spots, please. Yes, if you put the serial cards in the middle of your table, that would be great. We'll collect them. Thank you. in and Christy was passing out candy and I was passing out cereal cards. Christy dropped off a stack of papers on your table, hopefully for each person. So on the top of that are two articles and that's how we're going to start our review of DILT's nested levels. Um, rather than me standing here and going through it again, some of you have been in attendance for all sessions, some of you had conferences or um, professional learning on other dates. So we thought an article might be a great way to review some of the thinking that we've had around DILTS levels and bring that thinking back to mind or catch you up to speed if you weren't here. So 
Who Do You Think You Are is the title of one. And then the other one is How to Use Logical Levels in Coaching Situations. So if you'll take those out, we're going to kind of read them silently to ourselves. And then as you complete that and you notice those around you completing that, find an elbow partner and reflect on the questions on the right-hand side of the screen. So in, in our preparation for this session, we were consulting um, some of the cognitive coaching materials and thinking about DILT's levels, and we ran across this quote that said, one can self-coach oneself into a temporary identity perspective. And sometimes we need to do that as coaches. This particular story happened to be at about, about an administrator who was feeling very much like I am the administrator, but was sitting as part of a committee and found himself, after the committee work several sessions, realizing that he was acting as the administrator on a committee and voicing or believing he was the administrator. So his identity was as the administrator but realizing he needed to be part of the committee. And so he talked about stepping back and saying, I'm not in charge. I need to place my ideas on the table in this committee and not jump up on the table with them. And so he did some self-coaching for himself to say, I am a committee member, part of a group. I'm an equal player. I am not the decision maker here, that we have a consensus process, and I need to follow that just as I ask everybody else to. And so really did some self-coaching for himself to put him in a self in a student place rather than an administrative role. Um, and so that, you know, if you want to read more about that story, you can look in the cognitive coaching book. We reference it there kind of for you. But when might you need to self-reflect and self-coach yourself? How can you teach other people how to do that? Where does that fit within your identity? We're going to do some thinking about um, using the identity as a filter again today. We're going to say, what does this mean to you? How is it shaping your work? How does it apply to your content? And when might you need to shift your identity? So at your table, kind of fun. And if you're not with somebody else, please join another table. Make a group of at least three or four. Um, so you can continue to have dialogue throughout our, the rest of our time this afternoon. What is this identity work, this thinking around DILT's level done for you in your role? How have you changed some actions or thoughts or beliefs? And what do you see going forward might be a next step for you? So if you're not with another table or a group of people to talk to, you might want to move, like pack and stack and move for the rest of the session. And as you're doing that, we're missing a life. Thankfully, it's just a breakfast club life, but we did borrow these from somebody else in our department. So you happen to have a life card. If you could bring that up or check around your table. Thank you. Finish your sentence. Begin to bring your rich and wonderful conversations to a close. Hearing a lot of conversation around trying to find through conversation and dialogue where a person is at with their levels of learning and where might your coaching need to start. Um, I have a couple of teachers I'm working with right now and really I'm not coaching literacy, I'm coaching identity. They need, they're shifting who they believe they are as a teacher because of changes around them that are pushing that. So I'm coaching them through this shift because I know that's where they need to start. It would be really easy to start at their skills. It's a lot more difficult to start with identity and values and beliefs. But when we have big changes, sometimes that's where we need to start. And what Sarah had talked about the first time we learned about DILTS is that there's influence that goes both ways. So the environment can push up and shift your identity. Your identity can shift and shape everything going down as well. So keep that idea in mind of those two forces pressing on each other as we start to talk about environment. So you notice here we have environment spelled two ways. Those of you that are a little OCD about grammar like me, might this might drive you a little crazy, but it's done on purpose. 
we have, when we talk about little E environment and we talk about big E environment, those are things, environment is the stuff around you. And we try to differentiate between the physical things and the intangible things. Hence the use of the two different E's, okay? So you have in that packet that we handed out to you a color copy that looks like an atom. This is another way of looking at DILT's levels. You'll be using this as a note-taking sheet as we go through um, the big E and little e of environment. You notice in this model, um, the identity is in the middle, and then everything else kind of swirls around it. The values, beliefs, um, capabilities, skills and behaviors, and then environment surrounds all of those. So we thought, well, let's take notes about the environment around this atom to help you understand and figure out what environment looks like and means to you in your context. Okay, so you'll use this as sort of a note-taking guide. The reason this model came up is because things don't always work in a linear fashion, especially when you work in a dynamic system. Schools are dynamic systems. They don't always go from point A to point B to point C to point C. Sometimes you go A, and then A has a domino effect, and then you have B, C, D, and E that all fall apart, and then you have to go back to like pre-A and then go to step A again. When we work in systems like this, one little rumbling or one little change can impact everything else. So someone smarter than me developed this model to show how DILTs might work in a dynamic system where things aren't always as cut and dry as we would like them to be. These slides are in um, Google Classroom for your reference. This image came from this giant document that's linked here if you would like to find the actual source for it. Okay. So the little e environment, you notice this is not uppercase, that was done on purpose. The little e environment are things that are tangible. It's the physical stuff around you. It's, it's the room is cold, the tables are big, the chairs are arranged in a semicircle, the lights are low, um, there's candy on the tables. Those are the little e environment things. It's the stuff that you can see and hear and feel. When we modify the environment, we can promote changes in behavior. So if I want more collaboration in my classroom, I'll put the desks together. That will promote collaboration. If my kids are driving me crazy and I need them to just tend to themselves, I will put their desks separate and that will make it so that they can't talk to each other anymore. So depending on the type of environment, the type of behavior I want, I can modify the environment to try to promote that type of behavior. You notice that Sarah asked some of you to stack and pack and move because we're doing a lot of collaboration in this session. And so we needed to modify our environment a little bit in order to promote that behavior. So on your note taking sheet right here, do a little bit of reflection using the questions on the screen and start to sketch out your answers to those questions uh, in and around this atom. Okay, wherever you are is good if you would put your pen or pencil back on your table. Um, we'll give you some more time to continue to think about environment as we move into the big E. So remember little e environment is the stuff around us. It can include the physical space. It can include schedules because remember schedules is something you can physically change. I can go in my Google Docs and I can change the schedule. That's part of the environment as well. Now we move on to big E. This uppercase E is there on purpose because big E is the, the intangible stuff. It's the culture. It's the climate. It's how a place feels when you walk in. You know, sometimes you walk into a school and you're like, wow, this place is really welcoming, but you can't really put your finger on it. Or you walk into a school and you're like, whoa, we've got some work to do. And you can't really put your finger on it, but it's that feeling. Okay? It's the morale, values, and belief. It also has to do with purpose. Why am I here? Why am I in this place at this time? What am I working towards? Purpose plays into that. So 
So if I am in an environment where I am under an administrator who's very commanding and says, this is the way it's done, my way or the highway, that has a potential for me in terms of my learning. And if that environment shifts and my administrator is open and collegial and has dialogue and takes in multiple perspectives, that can shift my learning. It can shift the way that I do my job. So it will shift my behaviors. It will shift my skills and my capabilities. It will shift my willingness to take risk. So those are the types of things that also can change behavior, skills, capabilities. So in this biggie environment, take some time on your note-taking sheet to process this a little bit using the questions on the screen. Considering morale, values, purpose, that intangible stuff as part of the big E environment. That last question I think is especially important. As we start to synthesize little e and big E, what might you shift in that little e environment to start to change that big E environment? So what might you shift in the stuff to change the morale and the values and the feeling and the culture and climate of where you are. Okay, we're going to have you pause wherever you are is good. And if you would put your, sorry, I always do this with kids, like put your pencils on the table, bring your attention back up here. Um, if you're taking notes, keep your pen in your hand, that's fine. <laughs> but we're going to move on to the next part. So. This quote came from the Cognitive Coaching book, and it says, environment can modify the expressions of identity. So I might express myself differently in my home than I do in my workplace. I might express myself differently in this workplace than I do when I'm at a school. I might express my identity differently if I have a really authoritarian um, administrator or an open administrator. So depending on my environment, the way that I express who I am is going to shift. So that goes back to that same idea of we have influences up the triangle, we have influences down the triangle. So each direction can influence the other. a lot to take in. So we're going to give you some time. You've had some self-reflection time. We're going to give you some time now to really synthesize your learning with a group of others. Um, we're going to have you number off one through four. And if you're a one, you'll come here. There's a number one beautifully drawn by Sarah's kids over here. There's a two here, three there, and four on that side. So clockwise around the room. Okay? So if you would start as one, Amy, mm -hmm. one, two, two four. One, two, three, Take your note-taking sheet, go ahead and move, and just have some dialogue around your thoughts and reflections and begin to synthesize this learning for your context. You would begin to finish your sentence Maybe take one more minute to wrap up your conversation and thank your group members. Then we'll begin to move back to your tables. As you move back to your seats, you're going to want to look for the next paper in your packet, which is goal setting is. So you have a page in your packet called goal, set, goal setting is. This format should look familiar to you if you've been with us in this session before. We have used similar formats in the past when we're doing some reflecting on different approaches. There are many different approaches to coaching and we have to strive to find a balance of how we put those approaches together to figure out where we are. We have to find our identity and where we live in those coaching styles. So we talk a lot about cognitive coaching. If you're in our morning session, we talk some about Jill Jackson's um, style of coaching and then we take into consideration what are the other standards out there so in Michigan the early essentials for coaching 
and um, the ILA secondary standards for coaching. We'll do some work around that. This page has those kind of three perspectives, right? Jill Jackson's the first box. Um, the middle box is the essential coaching. Sorry, the middle box is the cognitive coaching, which is on the bottom. The essential coaching practices perspective is on the back. So as we've done in the past, we're going to think about um, what are ideas you currently have about setting goals with teachers? And how can you use that to go? Sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. Hold on to this for a second. What are some ideas you currently have about setting goals with teachers based on your identity as a coach? And then we're going to jump ahead to reading those perspectives and thinking about how they might integrate with your identity or conflict with your identity. So if you talk at your table, what are some ideas you currently have about how to set goals with teachers? So as you wrap up your brief sharing at your table, take out that goal setting is she and start to read through those perspectives. And then make some notes to yourself on the back in that blank spot about um, what are some other viewpoints I need to consider? How does this fit with my thinking? What might or might not fit with my thinking? So as we shift from thinking about setting goals with teachers to setting goals for ourselves, um, think about the relationship that your identity plays in, in setting goals and the changing role that you might have when you're self-reflecting versus reflecting with a coachee, per se. Um, Christy is going to move us into the part where you will need the coaching continuum. So if you do not have that from last time or you need an additional copy for some reason, there is an early literacy coaching model in the high school, middle school, ILA model up there on the table. You're welcome to come and get it. Okay, so we've kind of worked our way through environment. Um, we've looked at identity, values, and beliefs, and now we're moving into that area of ability. So within this coaching continuum, we're going to start thinking about how I might grow as a coach. And in order to help us grow, sometimes it's good to have a third point to reference back to. Instead of saying, oh, I want to grow here, I want to grow there, what is a continuum that we might look at to help us know where we are and what our next steps might be. So that's where these continuums or kind of coaching standards from ILA for secondary come into play. So last time <clears throat> we used this same process and we only looked at sections one through three in the or sections one and two in the secondary. Today you're going to read through sections five through seven in the elementary or sections and four in the secondary. And as you read, begin to think about and self-assess where you might currently be. So if I'm reading this, maybe I feel like I have accomplished use here and developmental use here. So I'm going to self-assess and see where do I feel like I am in my coaching practice based on this continuum and these points. So as you find your continuum, elementary sections five, six, and seven, secondary sections three and four, and start to self-assess where are you with each of these things. If you'll take about, <clears throat> excuse me, if you'll take about one minute to finish up where you are, and then wherever you are is good. Just take one more minute to finish up where you are. Find a good stopping point. And once you've found your stopping point, if you would bring your attention up here, we'll move into the last part of our time together. So we're going to take this idea of growing as a coach and DILTS levels and start to put them together. What does using DILTS levels look like in coaching? And so as we were doing some research, we found a guide that uses DILT's logical levels or levels of learning as coaching questions. I know. I was really excited about it. Come on, you guys. Are you excited a little bit? Because this is kind of cool. Okay? 
So if you have gone through cognitive coaching, you know that there are maps that you kind of keep in your mind as you go through something. This is kind of like your maps for DILT's levels, which I thought was kind of cool. So what it does is it has you start with a focus question. And our focus question is, how might I grow as a coach? So all of these questions are really relating back to helping me understand how I might grow as a coach. There are several questions under each heading. You don't need to ask all the questions under each heading. These are examples of the types of questions you might ask to get at each level of learning. So what the author of these steps suggests is that we start in the present tense and we move from environment to identity just to figure out what is it that's actually going on. So we ask questions from environment to identity, staying in the present tense. And now if you turn your paper over, on the other side, now that we've gone through environment to identity, then we turn around and we work our way back up. And this is sort of looking into the future. What are you going to do? What might need to change? How are you going to solve this problem? So you've identified everything in your environment. You have identified your values and beliefs. You've identified your skills and capabilities. You've identified your identity within this problem. Now you're going to start to solve this or get ideas around next steps as you move back up from, or I'm sorry, bleh, back down from identity to environment. Okay, so front side, present tense, moving from environment to identity, back side, then goes back down, identity to environment, moving into that future next steps. Start on the front. You don't need to ask every question in every section, but try to ask at least one question in each space. You're going to get with a partner. We will switch roles after five minutes. We kind of have to stay within that time frame today, okay? These are your prompts to use as you coach each other. You won't get through this whole sheet, but you will get some practice with it, okay? So go ahead, take your coaching continuum, the notes that you've made from that coaching continuum. Think about some priorities that you have identified for yourself within that. Take your um, questions around the levels. Find a partner. Decide who's going to be coach, who's going to be coachee, and start to have your coaching conversation. All right, and if you would, um, again, thank your partner. We know that this didn't get you all the way through both sides but hopefully it gave you a taste of how you might coach with those levels in the back of your mind and how you might walk someone through thinking through each of those levels. And if you would move back to your tables and take out your this I believe statement that we've been working on the past couple of sessions. Statement from the past. If you have it, great. If not, um, Christy's bringing around some extra blank paper. If you need some blank paper to revise and edit on or update on, she's bringing that. We are going to reflect on the this I believe statement that we previously have written. Um, we realized that there might be a couple minutes to reread. It might not be perfect, but we have been walking along this path and thinking about our identity and what are our beliefs and related relation to that in coaching. And so what might you add? today related to environment, big E or little E, goal setting for teachers, or in relation to your own practice, and incorporate that into your this I believe statement. Wrap up our session today. Uh, in your green packet, there is a reflection square about what do you need to take away or consider from this session and learning into your problem of practice. And um, as we move towards that, you'll have about 10 minutes between now and 2.10 to kind of finish up your thinking, write down those thoughts, take a break, get some coffee, make your way either to back to the elementary or secondary room for the closing session. Thank you.